What do you think is the number one contributing factor to global warming? Agriculture? The fashion industry? Uh, something else? <laughs> I'll tell you a secret. It's the U.S. military. The U.S. military is the world's largest consumer of oil. It's the world's biggest polluter. Our armed forces create 750,000 tons of toxic waste every year. Depleted uranium, jet fuel, pesticides, lead, and other chemicals too. Do you think it's a coincidence that the military emissions are often overlooked by climate studies? The Kyoto Protocol. That's why. <laughs> there are actually very few things we can do that are as environmentally catastrophic as war. I think we all can see the irony that we fight these wars in order to get oil. But if we didn't fight these wars, we wouldn't need the oil. Not as much. We're like a snake eating its own tail. There are 800 military bases around the world. Wait, are there 800 countries? There aren't. There's only 194. I'm not a mathematician, but um, that sounds really excessive. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but the only way we're going to reduce climate change is less money to the Pentagon. We can't keep supporting the military machine. I know what you're going to say. Oh, but if we weren't the world's empire bully, then someone else would be. So it's better that it's us rather than, I don't know, China or Russia. But is it? That's basing your assumption on the fact that we have to have a world bully. Don't you think that the fact that we're racing towards our own extinction makes it crystal clear that maybe we don't have to, I don't know, fight each other all the time? There are plenty of ways to restructure society, like cooperating, collaborating, working together. I don't think our taxes should be going to where they're going to anymore. Not if we want to survive. The best thing we can do to support our troops is actually stop giving all this money to an endless war machine.